going on everybody sasquatch wizard at rondex <clears throat> a while back ago i was uh telling you folks that um i was gonna do a little bit of investigating and uh i was interested in a phenomenon called magneto reception <laughs> first i'd like to introduce my partner in crime miss camille say hi camille hi and I gotta tell you guys, she's identifying birds, she's identifying tree twists and breaks, making sense of it. And we just did a video on something very interesting. There's a good possibility you may have just seen that, but I'm really proud of her. She's doing a fantastic job. All right, so I can't, I couldn't memorize this. And um, although I'd like to stare right into the camera and uh, you know, explain to you my week and a half worth of research I can't do that so I'm gonna read it to you all right and here it goes this is my research on magneto reception the ability to detect and navigate magnetic fields in the mid 1900s new studies were prompting scientists to look further into the reasons why some birds were reacting consistently during a period of the year known to us as migration. I think the more common one we all relate to up here in the Northeast would be the Canadian geese. As a hunter since childhood, it's always been a treat to watch these amazing birds organize themselves in a sort of diagonal line or more commonly known as the large V formation. And I'm also always amazed at the swarms of blackbirds by the thousands flowing through the sky, appearing dark, then lighter, then back to dark, as they turn on a dime. Both flocks of birds following a lead bird, yet connected. What's that connection? Does that lead bird just make a little peep or something up front? Left! Thousand birds, right! Land in, the, land in the power lines. Take off from the power lines. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. It's uh, There's got to be something there. A little more than that, eh? All right, let's move on. So I ask you, what's to stop Sasquatch from using the very same phenomenon? Could it be possible that Sasquatch use a form of magneto reception to travel or to haunt? Or maybe it's conceivable that they use this to communicate in a more powerful manner than any other species on the planet. And I mean, we, we know that Sasquatch have amazing abilities. And um, maybe when it comes to magneto reception, they have a level of understanding and ability that would dazzle our minds. Scientist abroad. Maybe that's why the government doesn't want us to uh, get one and really study these things. Maybe if we learned the abilities of Sasquatch, the government wouldn't get away with the things they get away with. <laughs> Who knows? Trout have been studied and it's said that they have a few select cells in their nose that react to magnetism. Although trout have now been studied, there seems to be very few cells reacting. Those of which are, are reacting vigorously. I looked into this a little bit deeper and found that magnetite, which is uh, the strongest magnetic material known to man, on earth more they could have some other magnetic material in their head that we don't even know about that could be a brand new discovery as well but some magnetic material should be present inside these cells in order for these fish to be able to detect a specific direction using the magnetic lines of our very own magnetosphere now I explained to you guys a little bit about the magnetosphere. 
I told you that we're going to be talking a little bit about space weather. I haven't figured out how to really present that because it's such a large, complex topic. That fact that I'm studying Sasquatch and this is what this research and channel is all about. I need to keep that aspect very simplified. So I will keep it very simplified. We have a solid iron core surrounded by a molten lava iron core. Tons of different types of minerals and stuff that are in it. It's rotating. That rotation creates current magnetism. That magnetism, just like a north and a south on a magnet, try to put one together, one north to a south and it repels, put north to north and it attracts, well, with the Earth, that magnetism comes out, it circles around like an electrical circuit and goes back up inside of the South Pole, comes out of the South Pole, goes down into the North Pole. It's continuous. And we need that because the solar radiation and energy and molecules, all that comes off the sun with such a great force that if we didn't have that magnetosphere it would blow our atmosphere right off the face of the earth <coughs> so them magnetic lines are what's coming right out of the north and south poles and hooking around the earth and going back up. That's a straight line. They don't wiggle as they go down. They go right up and over and back up and it's a cycle. When the sun's going through a solar minimum and the sun's strength and activity is at a low, the magnetosphere in the earth relaxes. The magnetosphere settles back in closer to earth and becomes weaker when the sun starts to lift up its activity and we have solar flares and sunspots and CMEs, well, the earth reacts in a natural way. And that magnetosphere grows strong and pushes out and repels and protects us. Somehow, reptiles, mammals, and birds of specific kinds have an ability, some probably more than others, some a little bit different than others, to be able to detect these magnetic lines. And some are said to actually be able to see the magnetic lines. They think maybe cows. There's a reason why cows line up north and south. Or they say that dogs will circle around, circle around, circle around, and all of a sudden pick a spot. Check it with your compass. I'd like to know. I haven't checked it yet. But it's said that they will line up north-south. Not every single time. I And maybe they do. Maybe they do. I shouldn't have said that because I don't know that. Okay? Now again, I'm working off the shirt tails of other researchers. But I did dig deep into this to get you some good information. See that little Sasquatch girl behind me? Keep an eye on her. I see you. <laughs> so there's another. It's a protein, cryptochrome. I think you heard of me speak about it before. All right. This is found in the retina of the same common species. All right. Known to be present in specific mammals, reptiles, birds, and fish. Cryptochrome, found in the retinas of these certain animals, is a protein-based cell that has the ability to produce molecules called radicals. These radicals host, an unpaired electron, host unpaired electrons, which in turn actually allow them to see the magnetic lines. It is also being said in recent studies that we humans and other primates have this cryptochrome in our eyes as well. This is being called Cry2. And it's said that Cry2 is found to function in other animals as a light sensitive magnetic sensor. It's interesting. A light sensitive magnetic sensor 
I'm no scientist, but that sounds a lot like it might be tied into the special abilities that Sasquatch have. And actually some humans. I mean, if you guys were watching uh, Bigfoot Odyssey last night, uh, Carrie Arnold and uh, them folks show, uh, they had two gals on there that were, um, was that Mind Speak or Empath? Um, oh, Lordy. See, that's uh, <laughs> hard for me sometimes to remember specific words. And uh, But either way, these folks here, they go into some sort of a, a thought pattern, a meditation of some sort, or um, but um, they can uh, take a GPS location and in their mind find a spot and then actually envision, envision the area and actually get a mental picture of what's around there. And uh, I, I don't know, you know. I've never felt it. I've never witnessed it. I've uh, only heard about it and read about it. And so take it for what it is. Uh, they sounded pretty convincing. So who's to know? Um, but either way, the abilities that, uh, we as researchers can only speculate at this time may have some answers to what and why in the years to come. Now, all Sasquatch wizard needs to do is wave my magic wand and get a Sasquatch to allow us to physically study it. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Good luck with that, eh, wizard? <laughs> Camille, can you call in a Sasquatch? Woo! 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 <laughs> no. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, the fruits of my labor. Um, I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to continue on reading up onto it, and, you know, we'll throw it in the filing box. And when we come across things that are, um, you know, relative to that, well, then, hey, we spent some time, we learned it, we learned some terminology, and uh, hopefully if something happens, it might spark some interest, go back, dig into it, see if anything else adds up, and see what happens. All right, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it right now. All right. Okay, on a little bit of a more serious note, folks. Um, last Saturday, I actually haven't told anybody, but my daughter behind me. But um, I know. actually, she saw it on yeah. video. I did. So I, I am like, uh, I made a video and I wrote in it that I'm very reluctant to even put this out there because you know I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't. So I can't post the video right now until I gather the technology and the know-how to be able to take a video that I used that I used to videotape this possible. <laughs> it's a head. It's got big eyes, and it's blinking, and the head moved. You can see it. Research area too. And I think it was real. So I need to figure out how uh, I just saw it happen with um, what was that? Uh, Central Florida Bigfoot. He had his video running, and then somehow he cropped it, and then he had this like almost like a scope on a rifle, and he zing right in on it. I got to figure out how to do that because I got to see what's going on down there. <sighs> I'm not, I would, believe me, I'll tell you what, from the viewpoint of my camera, you see that, there's no doubt in my mind that you would say, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it, but, um, maybe, maybe, but I am going to scrutinize that from every angle that I possibly can, and I may even need to have it sent away and have somebody who's qualified look at it and come back and show me. And I know that crazy stuff can happen. I mean, I've saw stuff in the woods before where, uh, you know, from a distance of 150 yards, whether you're zoomed in or not, I mean, did a lot of hunting, and scope and everything, and you're, you're just looking at it and you're like, man, that is definitely a deer, or that is definitely a whatever you're hunting, right? 
and uh, then you end up staying there for an hour and you're waiting for it to move and it don't and then you end up going down there and you just can't believe that it's a fern right in front of a rock with a butt end of a stump and a mushroom all lined up just perfect looked exactly like the face of a sasquatch with the size of a head like a uh, schoolyard kickball hmm so I will say that at 150 yards after all of that took place, I, like a stalker, <laughs> walked down in there like stalking deer. You know, I sniped down in there very slowly. And when I got down in the area where it was that I believe that whatever I saw was. Everything around there is tore up. I'll show that video, I'll post that one. There's a tree snapped off 15 feet in the air. It's leaning over another tree bent. Ground's dug up all over the place. Think something's getting in there. Now that I've thought about it a little more, um, you know, I could I could put a bear on all the ground disturbance and possibly the walk path. So there's a beat up area at the end of this this uh, this area. And um, you know, if you ever ever walked into you know, it's, it's at least up here and around here. I've never been to the Rockies. I've never been down out in Arizona or anything else like that. So I don't know what your trails are when you walk in three and a half miles up into a fishing pond. But if you go up here, walk up into the woods, go into a fishing pond, and that trail's been traveled for the last 10, 15 years, well, when you're walking along, wherever the roots and stuff were at one time was covered with dirt and leaves, now is wore right down tight to the ground and the tops of the roots are all wore off. You can just, you know what I'm talking about, right? Well. There's an area through there when this activity increases then there's this Pathway through here. It's a big pathway. It could be a pathway for a bear I've seen guys have their trail cam set up um, And they keep getting a picture of the same bear going back and forth in the same area and then that last night I was thinking about that so I Can tell you that Saturday I went out and got a tree cam and I know that I know I, I know Nobody's having no luck with that. Very, very little luck with that. And I don't, I guess I don't expect to have luck with that when it comes to Sasquatch. But um, before anybody sees this video publicly, I am going to do everything I possibly can. And then I'm going to even wait a few more days to try to think of anything else that I can. And I'm going to talk to everybody that I can to try to prove that whatever it is that I videotape for what? About a minute. Yeah, and then about you a minute. Try to I tried to reposition, started freaking out. Then you forgot to where the spot was. And then I couldn't find the spot again. Wait, I tried to move. Get... I tried to get the camera on the tripod. I, I, I really should have just stayed right there and um, watched it. And just kept on watching it. But um, I saw it this morning. <laughs> And I've got a yeah. All right. Well, listen. Either way. All right. Yeah, sure is. Say goodbye, Camille. Bye. 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 All right. Everybody, take care. Hey, do me a favor. Hit the like button. Doot, doot. Go ahead. Hit it. Hit that like button. Tell them, Camille. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. And say please subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Bye. I love you, you buddy. Time. See you next time. See you, everybody. I we love you. Alright, say it with me. This is Sasquatch That's Wizard waving my magic wand. <laughs> Whoops, here we go.